from around the globe, it's theCUBE. Covering HPE Discover Virtual Experience. Brought to you by HPE. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of HP Discover Virtual Experience. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. I'm here in the Palo Alto studios for the remote interviews. We're all sheltering in place and we have two amazing guests on a great topic, women leaders in technology, a strategy for growth. Rashmi Kumar, Senior Vice President, Chief Information Officer at HPE and Marissa Freeman, Chief Brand Officer of HPE. Welcome to theCUBE and looking forward to this great conversation. Thanks for joining. Thank you, John. Yeah. Before we jump yeah. into it, can you guys explain your roles at HP? I'll see the chief information officer role is pretty well defined, but it's changing these days, Rashmi. And as a brand officer with the remote workforce, Marissa, these are changing times. Can you guys take a minute to explain your role? Rashmi, we'll start with you. Yeah, so my organization and my role is in the middle of uh, digital transformation, which has become even more critical um, in these days of uh, uh, landscape level, um, uh, my team is involved in end-to-end -end process transformation for HPE, as well as a uh, key part of the pivot for as a service and running the operations smoothly, uh, as well as making all 60,000 employee, 20,000 partner uh, move to work from home. Uh, we are engaged in this from uh, later part of January, uh, so to say, when it first started in China. So the organization is super critical for the success of HPE to keep our operations running as well as all the employees engaged in their work. Awesome, Marissa, your role. I am the chief brand officer of Hewlett Packard Enterprise. And my responsibility is to help tell our story to customers, prospects, um, analysts and press, and beat the drum for our employees. So as we pivot our company and our strategy, um, we work with Antonio to ensure that everyone understands why HPE and how we can be your best transformation partner. You know, one of the exciting things that's coming out of this uh, new reality is that the workforce, well, the, the role of work is changing. Obviously workforce, workplace, workloads, workflows. Um, variety of topics, but one of them is the personnel piece. And you guys have uh, women leaders in technology uh, program. It's really phenomenal. Can you talk about the mission and vision and what are the goals? Um, you know, women in technology is something that's important and leadership as well. Could you guys explain the mission and vision of women leaders in technology? Yeah, sure. Um, so the Women Leaders in Technology established by uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise to connect with our customers at our annual conference who share our common belief in inclusion and diversity, specifically advancing gender equality and empowering women with the support of the men at the workforce as well. The event is a collaborative form for women and men allies who are committed to drive, learn, and leverage best practices and in technology innovations um, to make a difference in their businesses and communities. Um, our goal is to unite influential leaders from around the world with a charter to increase, attract, and retain diverse talent by showcasing great contributions made by women um, while their careers in STEM plus C, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and uh, computing. And I see that all our leaderships uh, are very passionate about making sure that we get the right level of engagement, both from women and men allies to be able to advance this um, cause at the company and with our customers as well. Marissa, on the leadership side, we've talked about something in the past, you and I, and uh, you're passionate about the, the women leadership piece. What's your take on this? Well, we know that when women leaders uh, are at a company, the company is more financially successful. Um, we know that women lead differently and bring a, a unique point of view to the table. And so diversity and inclusion, generally speaking, is so very important to the success of a company, to the happiness and retention of their employees. Um, so yes, we, we focus a lot on that. And I think importantly, we think about uh, reward, recruit, and report. So it's not just something, diversity and inclusion is not something that we wish for at HP. It's something that we action and we work towards. 
Um, and it's a journey, you know, we want, we aren't there yet, but we are on a path and it's something that we, we report on internally to, to each other. We understand exactly where we are. Um, we recruit with purpose, uh, in, and intention of widening the aperture and bringing in people who are different from each other, um, to, to add to, to the fabric of our company. Um, and then we also reward our leaders for doing the right thing and being inclusive and hiring diverse talent. So it is very much part of our culture uh, and our performance. You know, I always ask the question because I'm male and I wanted to, and Rashmi brought it up as well. How are the HPE male leaders impacting and enhancing and participating in the strategy? Because it takes everyone's involvement to make women in leadership successful and beyond. Um, so this is super important. Can you share um, your thoughts on how that's going? So as we form our teams, as well as these um, specific uh, and employee resource group to be able to focus on um, younger women or women technologists, uh, we do it alongside our men allies. Um, at, at some point, it is technology is so critical. Digitalization is such in hyper growth mode if we need to be successful with our product and services in the marketplace, we need to have equal participation uh, from talent from across um, the bodies of men and women. And um, irrespective if I'm a women leader or a man leader, I need to be able to tap to that talent to be able to uh, kind of bring our product and services to our markets or run our operations well in the in the company. So uh, we we really, when we strive to fulfill the cause, as Marissa mentioned, um, from growth perspective, um, we have re we have achieved where uh, we are equal partner in making um, uh, this a priority for the company to ensure we get um, women and uh, uh, both men and smartest men, men and women from across technology areas to come and work with us. Marissa, I want to ask you before I go back to Rashmi about the whole workforce and workplace and technology. Um, from a customer perspective, how are you guys seeing their workplace changing from a business perspective? Because you know, you and I again talk about about experiences, and that's something that you really believe in. Obviously, having great experiences at the physical events. Now you're doing the, the virtual event, but your customers are also living a, a changing uh, workforce, and they need to be equip themselves with with this. How do you see? the big picture there, because that's a big part of you guys aligning with the customers. And I won't say change the experience, but you know, align with the new expectations. These are, these are new things that are happening in real time. Part of running the brand is also understanding culture and what's around the corner. And I think that our company does that by nature anyway, because we are a technology company and we have to think about where our customers are going, where they're heading skate to where the puck is going and meet them there. So trends like uh, approximately 50% of workers will probably not go back to the office full time. So we have a whole suite of products and services that we, are, we have been talking about very much in recent times um, that help customers, uh, that help everyone work from home. Um, so many of the offerings that, that we have for example, during COVID, many of our customers couldn't or wouldn't send their employees um, into the data centers or into their offices to, to work on their technology. We had our service people able to help them remotely and in some cases actually show up. 25,000 people around the globe there to help. Um, in fact, that was our campaign and it still is and it's the theme of HPE Discover HPE is here to help. So as your workplace changes, as you go through the recovery, as you return to work, as you continue your digital transformation, HPE is here to help with very actionable, instantaneous solutions um, to, to help with COVID and, and beyond. You know, we've been following HP, you know I've been following HP for many, many years uh, and decades. And I know, and for the folks watching, that you guys have a really robust internal intranet and system that you guys have built out. And, and, and you're on the leading edge as well of your own HP 
equipment and technology and software, always been resilient from my perspective. So Rashmi, I got to ask you, you know, this disruption we're seeing hasn't been forecasted. It's not like disaster and recovery scenarios, a hurricane, it's not a, a flood or a hurricane Sandy like we saw in the, in, in the past. This is, was a new kind of disruption vector, not seen on cybersecurity radars. This is new. So at the end of the day, it's still a disruption. It's a challenging time, but there is an opportunity for CXOs out there to look at the projects and saying, where are we exposed? Where are the gaps? And I think we're seeing new app development. We're seeing new kinds of technology projects kind of being tweaked a little bit, some kind of being sunsetted. It's an opportunity for CXOs to really double down on this. So I want to get your take on how you see the challenge being met by the customers and the tech opportunities that they can lead through this. Absolutely. So anything this pandemic has taught us that uh, uh, digitalization our way forward. Uh, we have been engaged in the um, transformation for HPE on a journey for the last couple of years of entire uh, code to cash process as well as our supply chain and fulfillment uh, process. Entire experience for our customers um, has been changing as well as for our employees. So as our customers look at this um, pandemic and think about what they need to invest in is the, for the employees work from anywhere, anytime and be available to work for. And we have technologies which enables that. At the same time, we are right in the middle of um, providing the best ERP solutions, best um, code to cash type solutions and our infrastructure and capabilities power that. If you take our Edge um, Aruba solution, we were in the middle of uh, powering up all the makeshift hospitals as well as the cruise ships, which were transitioned as hospital uh, to be able to provide them internet uh, for connectivity. If you look at the initiatives we had here in the South Bay area and on providing um, Wi-Fi in the parking lot for schools so that students could complete their so HPE has this um, kind of end-to-end -end solutions around these technologies, which could uh, create resiliency in our customers and provide them product and solution to be able to continue their um, operations seamlessly even during these times. You know, it's interesting. I've always loved the future of work kind of scenario and discussions, but they all kind of felt um, a little bit too fuzzy around just collaboration. Uh, you know, future of work, which is cool. I'm not against that. But when you look at what we're living now, what you were just talking about is, it's not. It's workplace, workforce, workloads, workflows. It's not just collaboration. That's just one aspect of it. I think we're seeing now this new reality is that it's going to impact the entire end to end, as you point out. Yeah, are there areas that you see are opportunities for customers? Because you know we've heard DevOps has always been on the fringe of kind of the tech community, always leading edge on the cloud for the past 10 years. But now you've got operations, IT operations, network operations, all these other systems that were kind of on a nice, nice path before disrupted. This is not yep. just work collaboration, it's everything. <laughs> What's your thoughts? Yes. Yeah, so yeah, great, great point. So if you look at collaboration, collaboration is kind of the facade uh, versus everything that happens behind the scene. So if you look at a TV show, what you're seeing is the end result, but there was a huge production effort behind it um, to be able to get you that content. And if you look at a particular transaction today from ERP perspective or a customer buying a product from you, this is the facade. There is a lot of stuff that goes behind it uh, for providing our employees the right tools, keeping our um, networks connected so that employees can in, uh, use those tools successfully as well as securely. So this time has taught us to quickly pivot and bring in um, some new capabilities from technology and digital capability perspective in every area of, of the business, starting from the facade, which is the collaboration tool, at the same time, ability to run your business through these technology uh, capabilities and do it very securely, providing connectivity from our data center to a manufacturing factories location to now employees home to our partners and uh, as well as cloud. And that uh, has created a very complex ecosystem of connected um, universe uh, for every company. I feel 
we are a global company, so we were a little lucky in getting early warnings um, in January and preparing uh, to come to where we were coming. And um, and I, I'm, I'm so proud of the IT team here. We did a major release of our transformation program, which we call NGIT, on 13th, 14th, 15th March, right before we started Shelter in Place. And there were thousands of people working globally to bring this capability for our ERP systems, and it went flawlessly. And since then, we have done uh, four or five releases, and the organization had been able to carry yeah. through it. Preparedness and resiliency, great features. Marissa, you know, back to this brand experience that you're in your role, um, the facade or collaboration of the user experience is the front end of the back end. So you now have a real hyper digital or hyper virtual is my word for it, environment where people's businesses and the business impact is going to be severely impacted because people can leave a brand. So if, if I'm a customer of yours, I'm like, look, I need to get busy reinventing and, and getting my apps meeting the expectations of the customer. So you, know, you got to bring the experience piece of it as well as that enablement. This is a, a new expectation, um, radically more accelerated than it was in the past. What's your thoughts? Well, you know, Antonio a couple of years ago said the action is at the edge and the cloud is an experience, not a destination. So in order to create those very meaningful and differentiated experiences uh, for their customers, our customers need to have one single platform that's open and secure so that they can innovate from end to end, every workflow from beginning to end so that their experiences they deliver their customers are intuitive, intelligent, differentiated. So that is what we have been working for this, these entire last few years is to provide that cloud experience to our customers wherever their apps and data live so that they can have the freedom to innovate across the entire estate and do it securely. Um, that is the only way you're going to really provide these truly differentiated and insightful experiences at the edge, which is where the action is. Yeah, you guys are really putting out some really insight there. And I would just say that this highlights what I've always believed as making the innovation strategy concept, not just a cliche, but you, if you don't have an innovation strategy with tech and people, it's going to be exposed and the table stakes are there because of the, of the marketplace. If you don't deliver, the, the, the stakes are really high. And this brings back to the uh, women leaders in IT uh, you guys are doing. How do, how do people get involved? I mean, what's uh, the take on this? You guys are doing a great job. What's the process? Is it, uh, do you join? Do you guys recruit? I mean, <laughs> how does someone who's watching or participating in HPE Discover Virtual get involved? Uh, let me do a quick commercial because it is HPE Discover and the best way to get involved with women's leaders in technology is to join up, register for HPE Discover and join us on July 1st, um, managing the workplace in a new normal, July 8th, navigating change, the mindset for success in turbulent times, and the first one leading through recovery with Rashmi right here. <laughs> um, and I believe that's on the first Friday, so coming up next week. So those are three ways in uh, to get to at least be able to get involved with what we're doing. But we also do throughout the year events with our customers in multiple offices around the globe where we get together as leaders, we talk about leadership, we recruit. Um, then there's all of the other things that we support. And Rashmi, maybe you want to talk about that from Grace Hopper and all the way through some of the other wonderful organizations that our women leaders in technology are supportive of and engaged in. Rashmi? Yes, um, absolutely. So uh, first of all, our global um, women uh, leader ERG, as well as there are a couple other ERGs within uh, Business Unit, which works diligently to create engagement for men allies and women employees. So. My last travel before um, this pandemic hit and shelter in place came in was for International Women Day celebration in Sofia, Bulgaria. And what we did as women leaders of the company is created a, a competition uh, for the location to host that event. There was 
enormous amount of energy when I was in Sofia with guest speakers, uh, with uh, executive speakers and our men allies who were speaking at the event as well. And it was webcasted across the globe uh, for all HPE employees to experience. There were watch parties, there was enormous amount of energy um, going into the, the event. Similarly, when we participate in Grace Hopper, it's like a carnival for us. Uh, we have our boots, we do interviews. Um, Marissa hosted a great event at uh, uh, Disney for our um, college uh, uh, students who were attending Grace Hopper to come experience uh, what uh, HPE is all about and how dedicated we are to the cause of women and STEM and, and young women to showcase our leaders there and what you can be once you are at uh, once you are at HPE. So a lot of such events also happen at various locations. And uh, uh, as being women, we create everything fun, everything more engaging, and uh, everybody wants to participate in these events. Well, certainly now and you got to do it virtual. I think importantly, John, um, I don't want to overlook the the allyship. The men at HPE are very, very much a part of this and very supportive of everything that we do. It's um, it's not just all women. It is a lot of women, but but our men are definitely part of the part of the whole fabric of of it, including at Grace Hopper. And there's always great talent coming out of schools and seeing a lot of jobs out there right now. There's new jobs, so this brings up you know, the shift, um, you look at cybersecurity and all across the, in tech, it's the aperture of computer science has changed. You don't have to be a coder, you can do a lot of different things. This brings up the culture question. I'd really love to get your guys' personal opinions on this. Um, for folks watching, um, wants to see the new kind of Instagram picture of HP, if they wanted to look inside, what, how would you describe the culture of HPE these days? Obviously the innovation, you guys are super impressive. What's it like inside? What's it like to work there? How would you describe the culture of HPE? Well, it's it's a wonderful place to work and our culture is the primary reason why it is so. Um, it started with Bill and Dave. They were about community. They were not about building a conglomerate. They were build, about building a community. And, and that has just stayed with us throughout. Innovation is critical to us, being bold, um, being inclusive. These are our values, but they're not just words on a page. They, they are actually our values and we live them and our belief system. And then they were put down on a page so that we can all look at them, recognize them, celebrate them. And it starts at the very top. Um, Antonio has been with the company 26 years now, I think it is. Um, he is a true HPE, died in the wool, uh, engineer himself. And um, we all feel really good about being here and being with each other. We have a mission and a purpose, and that is to advance the way people live and work. That is why every HPE teammate gets up in the morning. That is what we do for a living. And it, it comes through in everything that we do. Rashbi, you're yeah, I would like to, I would like to add there is um, what Bill and Dave created for us um, and the good things that is um, retained uh, by HPE, as well as our ability to change and pivot. So as you talked about, John, we are a, a innovation company. We are a huge product and research-based company. Now with as a service though, we are also looking at how do we understand more outside in, what our customers are looking for, what kind of experiences when they interact with our products. and. How do we really understand it and, and drive um, alignment early on with our customers to be able to put these as a service products um, out to them and as well as quickly learn and pivot again as needed. So uh, the points that Marissa mentioned about uh, take risk, be bold, don't be afraid to be uh, afraid to fail as well as customer focus, relentless um, journey to ensure our customers are getting what they need um, has been kind of a new HPE culture um, manifesto, which is really uh, embodied by Antonio and the leadership team, which is then um, taken by our employees. So 
while we are keeping what's good from bill and date time, we are also augmenting it based on the changing needs of our customers and the industry that we are in, where we cannot be stagnant forever. I think carrying that mission and, and spirit of um, Bill and Dave is great. In fact, John Chamberlain notices on the, is on the keynote here at uh, Virtual Experience. He said to me privately that he has mad respect for HPE going back. He was hiring all the executives that from Bill and Dave's uh, cloth there and brought them into Cisco. Um, now he's out helping companies. And I think that is really about the community and the respect for the individual citizenship. Those are values that I think um, stand the test of time. I think that's great that you guys are keeping that going and that's awesome. And we appreciate the community support with theCUBE and, and collaborating. So thank you very much for that. Oh, and don't, don't forget the innovation. I mean, Marissa, go back to 2013, was it? You guys first coined hybrid cloud. I think that was like happening now. Like, I mean, innovation is still there. You got to be tech leaders. This is yet to come. Green Lake, we yeah. love our Green Lake. Great stuff. <laughs> thank you guys so much for this conversation. I really was, was awesome. Great insight there. Uh, congratulations on the women leaders in technology. Final question for you both. Complete this sentence. Women leaders in technology is a competitive advantage to your clients because blank. Because it's one more way that they can partner with HPE to improve the way their customers live and work. Rashmi, com complete the sentence. Women leaders in technology is a competitive advantage to your customers and clients because? We can collaborate to bring better product and services for their customers together. Awesome. Thank you so much and congratulations on the Women Leaders Technology. We'll be following it. We'll be, if you're going to do the virtual events, let us know. Uh, we got the remote studio. We always love collaborating. And of course, we got Women Wednesdays on theCUBE every, every, every week on our site. And thanks for, again, all your support. And this is a great experience. Thanks for spending the time. Appreciate it, Marissa. Um, thank, you. thank you. Stay well. Thank you. you. Okay. Stay well. Okay, HPE Virtual Experience. This is theCUBE, HP Discover Virtual Experience, bringing you coverage and great interviews from thought leaders, experts, community practitioners, and customers. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE, thanks for watching.